also met with Fidel Castro. I never heard no, heard uh, such a lot of uh, journalists. You know, sir, there is only occasions like this that I have so many journalists. A ver, donde nos quieren parar. Let's see where they want us to stand. Well, listen. I say good. It's a very great moment for us. Es un gran momento para nosotros. ¿Cómo se enteraron? How did you learn de que estábamos aquí? That we were here. It's a very great moment for us to be visiting Fidel. Es un gran momento para nosotros estar aquí con Fidel. Because uh, what he has done for us Porque lo que Fidel ha hecho por nosotros is difficult to put in words. Es difícil de describirlo con palabras. Firstly, during the anti-apartheid struggle, primero en la lucha contra el apartheid, he did not hesitate at all no to give us some por un maximum segundo support. En darnos toda la ayuda. And now that we are free, y ahora que somos libres, we have a large number of Cuban doctors here muchos médicos cubanos trabajando helping aquí, in the rural areas ayudándonos en las áreas rurales, where there are hardly donde any doctors at all. Hay donde no hay prácticamente ningún otro médico. And uh, I have had the opportunity y yo of he tenido la ocasión de darle las gracias uh, for the support a that Fidel, given. Por ese apoyo que nos está dando. And I promised him that I would discuss the matter with my office. Además, to say whether I can be in Cuba. Es algo que todavía tengo que ver con even mi oficina, before the end of this year. Quiero ir a Cuba antes de finales de este año. Good. Ustedes comprenderán. I'm sure you understand. Este es una de las tardes más felices de mi vida. That this is one of the happiest evenings in my life. Por tres razones. For three reasons. Porque encuentro a mi querido hermano. First, because I find my dear Andrea, brother Mandela. Mejor que nunca. Better than ever. Con un excelente salud. In excellent health. Segundo. Secondly. Con el mismo entusiasmo que tuvo toda la vida. Because I find him with the same enthusiasm that he has had in his life. Y tercero Always. por eso que nos And thirdly because of what he has just said. De que pronto nos va a hacer that very visita. soon he will be paying a visit to us in Cuba. Además que está en plena actividad. So he's fully active. Informado de todos los problemas. He's very mundo. well informed about everything in the world. Y muy deseoso de participar en la próxima conferencia internacional. And very wishful to take part in the next, uh, in the forthcoming international conferences. Son motivos más que suficientes para. So these tiempo. are more than enough reasons. Muy feliz. To make this one of our happiest. Uh, Days in life, I feel privileged y and very honored Thank to you be very here. Much, sir. Thank you. And staying with the story, let's take a look now at the life of uh, Fidel Castro. Revolución es sentido del momento histórico. Cuba's leader Fidel Castro presided for almost 50 years as the charismatic leader of the Caribbean's largest island. He lived to see a day many thought would never come, the reopening of the American embassy in Havana for the first time in 54 years, followed by the historic visit of U.S. President Barack Obama, after decades of hostilities between the two Cold War rivals. The seeds for that hostility were sown on January 1, 1959 when Castro first grabbed international attention by leading a guerrilla campaign, ousting right-wing Cuban dictator Florencio Batista. After claiming a victory in Havana, Castro launched a political, social and economic revolution, transforming a country once known as the brothel of the Caribbean into a third world power, but one criticized for denying dissent. Castro's strong anti-U.S. stance made him the target of several plots by Washington to topple him. These included an invasion attempt at Cuba's southern Bay of Pigs in 1961 by more than a thousand Cuban exiles, trained and financed by the CIA. In 1962, the Cuban Missile Crisis sparked a new round of hostilities after Castro allowed the Soviet Union to build a missile base in Cuba. For two weeks at the height of the Cold War, the world held its breath as U.S. President John F. Kennedy faced off with Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev. Tensions finally eased when Khrushchev announced he would dismantle the missile installations in Cuba. 
Cuba y la revolución. When the U.S. cut diplomatic ties with Havana, Castro went ahead and forged a successful relationship with Moscow. But the Soviet collapse in 1991 hit Cuba hard. Angry Cubans took to the streets to protest shortages and power cuts. Castro responded to the crisis, reluctantly allowing limited private enterprise and legalizing the U.S. dollar. But his arch enemy continued to be the United States. Tensions rose again in 1999, when then five-year-old Cuban castaway Elin Gonzalez became the subject of an international custody battle in Miami. Castro launched a campaign for Gonzalez to be returned to his family in Cuba, while other relatives fought to keep him in the United States. And in 2000, the young boy was reunited with his father in Cuba. Concerns first rose over Castro's health in 2001 after he fainted at a mass rally. And in 2006, the longtime dictator, suffering from intestinal problems, handed over power to his brother, Raul Castro. His public appearances reduced after his illness, but highly publicized visits from ally and protege Venezuela's President Hugo Chavez silenced any rumors that the dictator had died. In 2014, Castro was photographed with Vladimir Putin during the Russian leader's visit to Havana in July. And in September 2015, he was seen meeting with Pope Francis during the pontiff's historic trip to the island nation. The two men are said to have discussed religion and world affairs. Castro's legacy is likely to be debated by historians. He was hailed by admirers for promoting social reform and stamping a small country's mark on the world, but reviled by critics as the dictator who forced communism on a reluctant Cuba. Few, however, doubt Castro's political achievement in holding power since 1959, despite the opposition of 10 U.S. presidencies. Well, President Jacob Zuma also met with the revolutionary leader, Fidel Castro. Love. Thank you. Both seeking to enhance the relationship started by the predecessors. Mandela and Fidel Castro were close allies and comrades. Cuba actively supported the ANC and its armed wing of Kondo Wesizwe during the exile years. Mandela visited Cuba in 1991 to thank Castro for supporting the fight against apartheid. The warm relations live on. The president has been able to give me a briefing about what's happening in Cuba and Latin America in general. I also had an opportunity to give the president the developments in South Africa as well as in the continent of Africa. We also discuss about the bilateral relations between the two countries. Our relations continue to develop and consolidate. Relations between Cuba and South Africa continue to develop and consolidate. We are brothers and sisters in our blood. A brief encounter between Castro and U.S. President Barack Obama at Tuesday's memorial service caused a stir. Obama faced a blacklash from Republican rivals in the wake of the handshake. The two countries have not had diplomatic relations since 1960. Embargoes imposed on the communist regime are still in place. The White House said it was not pre-planned. Cuba suggested it could be the beginning of the end of the U.S. aggressions against the country. Cuban president is one of those of state who remained behind to attend former president Nelson Mandela's funeral in Kunu on Sunday. Montlingani Dipoku, SABC, Pretoria.